<laughs> Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. I hope you're having a good day. You're listening to or watching the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Tersh Blissett. Uh, on today's show, we're going to talk a little bit about AI. And you may not know what AI stands for, but we're going to get in, dive into that a little bit. And I have a great guest on the show today, Neil Sahota. And he is a, a guru when it comes to AI. And I'm super, super excited to, to talk more about it because in the HVAC industry, we are running into a lot more AI. And it's really cool because especially with a shortage of skilled technicians, it's very interesting seeing AI play a part in that. And I'm super excited to see, Neil and I were talking a, a little bit beforehand and 10 years ago, we were analog everything and, and now it's digital and, and AI and, and all this crazy stuff. So it's really cool and, and I'm super excited to, uh, to talk more to Neil about this. But anyways, welcome to the show, Neil. Hey, thanks for having me on, Trish. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about you, your background and a little bit about what you got going on. I'm a, a business guy turned techie, or maybe a techie guy turned business, not sure. But I, I started actually my career as a management consultant. And so I was the kind of guy that just wanted to solve problems, mm-hmm. not necessarily a problem at hand, but more generally. And, you know, it was about 15 years ago, people were, you know, saying like business intelligence, like it's amazing what the machines are telling us. I'm like, man, machines aren't telling us anything. <laughs> you know, like lots of data, we create these nice looking reports, but we're the ones like looking at the data. But could a machine do that? And I want to create a bunch of patents that we call machine learning and machines are that. One of them getting a call from IBM R and D to join a secret project called Watson. And next thing you know, I'm part of one of this, you know, start of an AI wave with the Jeopardy challenge and building out an ecosystem. That's really cool. So tell us before we dive into too many rabbit holes, because that's how these interviews typically go. You have a book out. Tell us a little bit about that. So the, the book is called Own the AI Revolution. And it's actually meant for business people, for non-technical people. And my goal with the book is to help them understand what is AI, but more importantly, how they can actually use it. I just saw too many people out there where they had books or they're giving talks and these are way too technical. Or it was a lot of fear mongering, right? Not, not to say there's no concerns around here, but you can't just lay a bunch of problems on someone's doorstep and tell them the apocalypse is here and then walk away. Right. You know, and I give them any kind of recourse. And so I wrote the book to really help people, a lot of people understand, but help them figure out what they could do. Because this is really an opportunity for people. And I don't think they realize that. So no Terminator, like in the near future? No, I can assure you that AI does not think for itself. It's all passive. I don't personally believe in a Terminator future. I believe in the cyborg future. Okay. That we as humans are going to augment our capabilities with machines. Yeah, but it's not machine domination. <laughs> well, that's good. That's always a good thing to hear. <laughs> so exactly for those who don't know, what does AI even stand for? AI is artificial intelligence. Mm. And basically what it means is that a computer can do tasks that require some level of thought mm. without any human supervision. So they're not following a path or anything like that or a decision tree. They're able to look at the situation and make judgment calls much like a person would. So if somebody has put in there an algorithm that says, if this happens, then this should happen as a reaction. Yeah, but that's not really AI. Oh, okay. That's like a, that's like a program. Yeah. AI is just looking at tons of data points and arriving at some sort of decision. So it, we give it something called the ground truth. Uh-huh. which are rules on how to make decisions, not the decisions themselves. Gotcha. So it, real simply, you know, a real AI system, you can ask it something that we don't have the answer to, and it'll try and figure out the answer. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, that's a big difference than, than <laughs> creating a program and, and writing it out because you would have to, as the designer or whoever, would have to come up with the answers to every Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't want to have that task. <laughs> so how is, how's a way that we can use, utilize AI in, in layman's terms? How, how is it as a business owner? How is it some helpful ways that we can use it? Well, the AI capabilities have been broken down. So it's kind of a mix or match what you might need. So a lot of it is around these days, like your eyes, your vision, visual recognition, understanding natural language, even to help with like customer service, uh, teaching jargon, helping to solve problems. But you know, you think about very something very simple. Tersh, like your your HVAC system 
breaks down, right? Call somebody and like, well, what's your model? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, or I bought this 15 years ago. <laughs> you know, and you have to go through all this rigmarole to help them try and figure it out. You now actually have people that have AI tools that you just take a picture of your unit, and the AI will figure out what model, even what year it is, and feed that information in. Great, great. So, as on the back end, is there stuff that we can use AI for as far as in the office, as far as the office goes? There, there is. I mean, there's a lot of different. Um, options or possibilities here you know everyone's kind of looking at chatbots for example to help field calls kind of the first wave of like questions whether it's about a product or about your company or the installation service you know a lot of people are doing this to help actually do marketing outreach lead generation there's a company called buy it installed that actually when you you buy something that needs to be installed like a hvac or a light fixture or something Rather than, you know, you get it from like Home Depot or something and you're on the hook to find an installer, they actually have a system where when you buy it, they'll get the installer for you, but they're using AI for artificial empathy. So they're trying to create a human-like touch point along each step of the process from purchase to delivery to installation to create a more human experience, a more pleasant experience for the customer. Is there ever a situation that you've experienced or that you've heard about that that people don't even realize that they're interacting with AI? Yeah, there's, there's quite a few. <laughs> it's, gotten, it's gotten pretty sophisticated that people don't realize. Uh, you know, a, a total side one, but maybe a cool one for people to think about is the dating apps. Oh, like yeah. uh, Tinder, it's now estimated that 40% of Tinder profiles are actually an AI bot. <laughs> and actually carry a conversation like four or five levels deep with a person without them ever even realizing it. That's scary. Yeah, pretty freaky, huh? <laughs> I mean, what would be even be the benefit of doing something like that on a dating website? I don't know. They're trying to get, they're trying to get information, right? Uh, there's like all these scams. Like, it seems like you're talking with someone. They, oh, it seems like they're revived. Like, well, just for our safety, mm-hmm. let's both use this website or whatever. Like, where you put some information in, and it's just it's a way to try and capture that information. Oh, and the person doesn't realize they're never talking to a human at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So is there, what's, what's the likelihood of people losing jobs due to AI? I know that's a, a, a real fear. There's, there's truth in that. Um, that's not the goal, but it will happen that some jobs will go away and new jobs will get created. And that's just what happened throughout human history. But you look at some things like you're probably not going to need taxi drivers anymore or truck drivers. And the fallout from that is then you probably don't need as many you know, auto supply parts, you need less people working in manufacturing supplies, you need less, you know, truck stops and roadside diners and motels and, and there's a huge ripple, ripple effect. People that actually work at those places and yeah, crazy. So with that being said, I guess, is there, are there other jobs that are being created by AI or is that, I mean, I, I do know that like a lot of people don't want to be screamed at on a phone. Like, if you can get some sort of AI to deal with like that, you know, that's, that's a positive, but then like your negatives definitely going to be your, your roadside diners. You know, if they're not, and there's no demand for them, then they're going to close up. But is there anything that's being created by AI? There, there is, it's not all gloom and doom and it's not all you know, these high tech jobs. Like you gotta be a roboticist or something like that. We're actually seeing a lot more need in the like philosophy and the arts, like the global arts. So the, the ability to create experiences is actually becoming huge. Just becoming the huge differentiator now, especially for companies. Whether that's you know customer experience, like the the purchasing experience, the installation experience, even the student experience, restaurant experience. There's a lot of focus on then how do you do that? So where do you put the human touches, the feeling of comfort and warmth? How do you pe- now appeal to people on an individual level? Yeah. So they don't want to be put in a box anymore. Yeah. And so you're going to need more people that actually understand kind of human nature, human psychology, but how do you get the motivations, the triggers for these behaviors? And that means understanding people. So more, it might be more life coaches, more yoga instructors as well. But I think the need for more emotional intelligence now integrated into all types of jobs is going to be paramount, and which means you need a lot of people that can help be coaches for that and can actually manage that and figure out what that means. Good emotional intelligence, uh, not 
sassy and <laughs> sometimes she just need that though too but so how could i uh, maximize the benefits of ai within a business circumstance you gotta you gotta use it to solve a, a problem okay. right and that's I, I, it's a funny object. <laughs> well, th- th- this this is actually the weird challenge when it comes to AI because a lot of people think, okay, you know, the, there's all these smart technologists working on this. They'll build something for me or tell me what I need. And the truth is, they just don't know people's domains well enough. I mean, how many technologists do you know are savvy at HVAC right, exactly. or health or or law? You know, <laughs> or even accounting. They're great at what they do, but they don't have a clue what you do. That's right. And so the power lies with the business, business people to say, where are the pain points in my, my company? You know, th- there were actually three lawyers that I met uh, three years ago. And they were talking like, hey, we sh- AI is like really taking off. We feel like we should do something. What should we do? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Where are your pain points? Like, what are those urinal cake yeah. activities everyone hates doing? All right. Yeah. All right. And so they thought about it and they, re- they realized that when it comes to when you get a complaint filed, against you. Nobody likes going through the complaint and doing the interrogatories, generating deposition questions and filing those court documents. And so you have three guys, three lawyers that knew nothing about technology, leave their firm and start a company and build an you know AI lawyer that actually does that work. Oh, dang. Yeah. So they actually started this little AI lawyer that and that, and what takes usually 12 hours worth of work, this is in two minutes. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's like, that doesn't put a bunch of lawyers out of business. It now freed up those lawyers to yeah. spend more time with their clients to work on the case strategy, to do like jury selection, right? Yeah. Higher value tasks. Yeah. I like the way you look at it there because it's, it's less of a doing away with lawyer job and do it. It's more of doing away with the jobs that nobody wants to do. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's where AI excels is those urinal cake opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are good urinal cake. <laughs> cool. Neil. Well, I appreciate it. And, and I'm definitely going to pick up your book and check it out because I, when it comes to technology, like I can do a little bit, I can write a little bit of code, but it's, AI is kind of one of those things that is extremely interesting, but I just don't understand it very well. So I'm super interested in seeing, seeing what you got going on there. And um, if somebody wants to reach out to you, learn more about AI or you in general, what's the best way for that to happen? Oh, they can come to my website, which is neilsahoda.com. See what I'm up to. You can always follow me on LinkedIn. I'm very active as well as on Twitter. Cool. Cool, cool, man. Well, I appreciate it. And until we talk again next time, I appreciate everything. And I will, uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Well, looking forward to it, Trish. Thank you. All right, man. You be good.